You were born in 1913. Not so loud. President was Woodrow Wilson. That's a long time ago. I was with the 31st Infantry. We was the only infantry regiment in the whole Far East. Mm -hmm. uh, our battalion was stationed in the Walled City, and second and third battalion near Joan Bridge, right in the city of Manila. Right. The peoples of Asia, the Japanese have often found ready supporters amongst the European dominated colonies, but they had counted wrong on the Philippines. Filipino and American fighting men, their backs to the sea, take a stand across the rugged jungle terrain of Bataan and doggedly withstand hunger, disease, and the amassed might of Japan's finest soldiers. Fifty days becomes two months, which become four months, and still the surviving guns of Corregidor offer support to the battered men of Bataan. Those few ragtag remnants of fighting men who pay a bitter price for the most desperately needed commodity in the early months of the war with Japan, time. Reigning defenders of Bataan, racked and ravaged by the wounds of battle, hunger and exhaustion, surrender and are ruthlessly submitted to a suicide death march. What was the mood in the camp at the time? I and mean, here you are, you're, you're given, you literally have to surrender yourself uh, and, and with, with, with no expectation of, of... Well, we didn't have no food left. We had to surrender. Right. And now that we could, half the guy that died from dysentery malaria anyway. The death march started in, in April 9th, 1940. Yeah, right. Did you know where you were going? Did they give you any sense as to... No, we didn't, we didn't know. All said we are moving. Right. See, when, when we surrendered, the Japanese are so confused. Right. They start banging us head to head, bang, mud, shoving us. They finally, they got us straightened. We marched out and calmed the fours. Right. And that day, the heat was so, so hot, 100, 405 degrees. You know, you, you can't, if you have malaria, by golly, and you get some of the heat, you're going to feel it. Right. That's what happened. So out, out we went. That start, all the dust going down. Uh, I've seen, I've seen uh, my buddy uh, lose the McAvey and he fell down, boom, boom, they shot him and uh, uh, McKenzie, they clubbed him. I've seen Colonel Ball get hit in the head. Uh, at one spot, one of the soldiers fell in a hole. I got that mentioned in the book here. Fell hole, the Japanese guards, they brought two of the men over. They told two of our men, bury them. They refused because that soldier was alive yet. Right. Then, then they had to shoot the whole three. I told about the tank cr crashed into the guys all I see. That was rough, but the rivers, the roughest part was hitting camp. Right. So when we, after the death watch is over, and what the actual the, death march itself was about six days, right? The, the, the you're you're right, you're right. Six days. Yeah. And, and you ended up at uh, Camp O'Donnell? No, first uh, we hit San Fernando. Uh, temperature was 108 degrees that day, still boxcars. They put 100 men each boxcar. Men suffering, screaming, we need air, we need air. If a man died, he couldn't fall down. Right. Then from that about Four or five hours later, at train stop, we got in campus. One thing is, I want to uh, thank the Filipinos. The men, women, children rushed out there with food, water, uh, bananas, eggs to give us. We was a carpenter car hero to them people. Right. But Japanese had the beating, hitting clubs, chasing them away. Definitely, we end up at. Uh, but the uh, campus that we had to walk another eight miles towards camp. When we got to camp, I made a look and said, oh my God, no. Uh, of shacks, uh, roofs leaking. Uh, we had to stand at attention. Imagine after all them days without water, we had to stand at attention near a spigot 
waiting for the Jap commander to come in there. He finally came up there. He said, I hate all you Americans. You're not going to like it here. Then released us, 100 men to camp. The bamboo slats was a bunk it cut right at the split bamboo cut in the back. We didn't have no blankets or mosquito bars, not like that. Our biggest trouble was uh, men defecating all over the place there. Uh, then we started losing 20, 30, 40, 50 a day. You were there until really February of 1945, right? About a thousand days you were in captivity. <laughs> how did you how did you possibly keep your spirits up? I don't know. In the books, it had a good sense of humor. I guess I'm uh, one of these older guys that I had. A, I had. I was making out rumors where guys land on islands that wasn't even such islands. <laughs> Until they waited for news, and I give it to them. Well, actually, that book, Bob, Bob, Bob Wise Surgeon, you ever get that? And mentioned how I built up the famous cow cafe yeah. so the men wouldn't eat out in the rain no more. So I've been the lean tooth down and eat with shack, so he, Well, you, not to only go around, what the latest? If somebody tell the rumor, and the other guy said, it's not true, he almost got beat up. They, they wanted that good news, see? And that's what we live for. But for the, I'm going to say, I'm that way. If I'm going to get it, I'm going to get it. If I go up heaven, the Lord said, you, you're not wanted here. Then if I go downstairs to the devil, he didn't want me either. So where am I going to go? i got to be somewhere, right? <laughs> well, they depend on me because I'm the old, older fellow, you know. Right. See a lot of boys got there, the not the guard kids, all young kids. Right. You know, and here I'm one of these older men there. They try to be hard because if they see they were probably treating the markets good, they go to front lines. That's what they want. How did you get news? How did you did you get any sense of what was going on? Uh, radio, was there any communication at all? We didn't have no radios or nothing, Cap. While there did you did you ever entertain any thoughts of just trying to bolt, leave, run away? Let me away? explain this to you. A lot of us could have got away. But if one man escaped, they shot the other nine men. It was my job to keep men from escaping. Oh. We had one man. They couldn't find him. Johnny's guard got charged us with bayonets. We found that man by the latrine. The reason why he made 14 trips back and forth, and he said he got tired walking back and forth from his bunk to the latrine, so that he laid right there, see. The Sixth Rangers show up in January of 1945. Did you know what was going on? No, all we knew, uh, well, the, when the shelling took place, we can hear it. Jammies all took off, so we ran on our side. We stole the chickens, ducks, eggs, rice, so forth. We ate good. I gained 15 pounds before the Morgans got in there, see. Mm -hmm. Then we heard the radio. We, we stole the radio. We heard the news coming in. In the meantime, Jamie says, you're all going to die. Just as Morgans get here, you, you're dead. So that way, we didn't know what's going on, and we, our biggest thrill was seeing the Morgan planes fly over camp with the fighters circling like that. Then finally, boom, 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 boom. That's when the Marcus made the landing. Okay. So, so when, it, uh, when they hit camp, uh, we didn't know, but a good thing they laid all night. They seen what camp the building was in. If then they, they, they could have got us in a crossfire. As the first realization of liberty sank in, prisoners wept, shouted, laughed, sang national anthems, broke out hidden flags, snake danced. Rumors said enlisted men would get new Fords, NCOs, Mercuries, officers, Lincolns. Our biggest trouble was, we was 25 miles in Japanese lines. Seems funny not one Japanese tank or plane flew over the whole 10 miles route. Till early morning, 
One plane spots it, come down this way. I said, oh, no, not now. Then he flipped his wing. Then he sent a message. The next thing we had, it was like 14 planes come in. The circle was protecting us, uh, you know. But biggest trouble is when they hit the market lines, high on the hillside with the market flag, they man broke down crying. That flag went home. So I give me a rifle. <laughs> Hand me a rifle. My head right me now. My thought was, I was worried about my wife and three girls. Right. When I got them all, they were they were okay. They were a little a little starving, right. but they came out of it okay. Then turned around. Tell me about the reunion. At some point, you see your wife. No, she said, "What took you so long?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank you ever so much for, for everything you've done for the country and for certainly coming up here today. When you, when you see other veterans, you, you, you thank them too, not only me. At the twilight's last gleaming, whose broad stripes and bright stars through the perilous fire. What's the message of your experience and how it relates to us today? I tell them, believe in God or listen to your parents. Most of all, if you see a veteran, go up and thank him for his sacrifice. Not to try to put it in the minds of all these kids.